How's it going, guys? It's been a while. I apologize. I honestly forgot this channel existed, but <laughs> sorry about that. I digress. So I added a new rifle to my armory for Airsoft. This is an Umarex H&K 416 Competition. Not to be confused with the low-powered AEG that they came out with for the 416. This is a mid-level to premium version of the 416. So, because it is Umarex, they are very similar to um, Elite Force and Cybergun, where they have the trademark rights to the external trademarks for these replica firearms, but then the internals, you don't really know what you're getting necessarily because they basically take already made AEGs and rifles and whatnot and rebrand them. But to my understanding, the internals on this are SEMA Platinum. So it has a V2 SEMA Platinum gearbox. It has a built-in MOSFET, MOSFET that comes stock. And it's $250. So you may be asking, why is this so much cheaper than the H&K 416, such as the VFC um, and other top tier models or the WE Tech, it's because the entire body is polymer or roughly 95% of the body is polymer. So you have your RS rail system, that's all polymer. Upper is polymer, lower is polymer. Pistol grip is polymer. Stock is polymer. Only metal components are really the buffer tube, the dual sling mount, and obviously I put a barrel extension with a muzzle brake on the front. That's also metal, and of course the barrel inside the RAS is metal as well. So everything else is polymer, and that's how they're able to price this at such a lower price point. I personally was excited about this because I always wanted a 416, but I wasn't sure that I really wanted to drop $500, $600 on a VFC. I was really just looking for a rifle that I could field when it's impractical to field an LMG or God forbid my LMG goes down. I wanted something that's just as reliable as my, let me scroll in. Well, that's blurry, but my G and G, or sorry, G and P, XM1772. But I want something with a rail system, and that's where this comes in. So that was my idea behind it. Um, I don't mind the polymer. I'm really more concerned about the internals, and that's where the SEMA Platinum internals really pay off. I think it's a good bargain if you're not really irked by plastic externals. I mean, again, we're grown men or teenagers playing G.I. Joe in the woods. I, I get the idea of realism, but I don't think it should really be scoffed at if someone has a all-polymer body AEG, especially when it performs well. And this one really performs outstandingly well. So I fielded it last weekend at an outdoor game, um, and... It shot really well. It was super accurate, even with 0.25 gram BBs. Um, I was engaging targets, you know, 150 to 175 feet away and actually getting accurate hits, uh, especially once I dialed in my red dot on there. Um, I was getting some pretty accurate hits. Now, there were some drawbacks. Um, it was about 40 degrees Fahrenheit where I'm at in New Jersey. It's February, so that was actually a warmish day. Um, I was having some issues with feeding with my magazines. That was the only downside, was that, you know, I, I don't know if it was the temperature dropping, but I test shot this indoors when I first got it at room temperature in my house, which is roughly 68, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was feeding just fine. I was using these Elite Force mid caps, which I've never had an issue with any rifle I've put it in with it feeding, assuming if it fits in the magwell, it's fired pretty reliably. Uh, but in this case, when I got out to the field, I noticed that, you know, it was, it, I was having some misfeeds. 
and I was it was dry firing when it should have been shooting. The mags were full. Um, it seemed like it was doing it with every magazine. I didn't bring all my Elite Force mags. I had like a combination of some mid caps and then like two or three high caps. So I couldn't definitively say it was the mags, but I was like, these mags aren't working. So I tried the high caps, and usually high caps, if, again, if they fit in the mag well, they should feed. Um, and they did feed pretty well. There were a couple that didn't feed correctly, um, and I'm chalking this up to the temperature because when I got home, I let the, the gun kind of get up to room temperature, and then I tried shooting it inside again, and all the mags that I put in it fed without a hiccup. So I'm guessing it might just be because of the polymer i'm not sure what it is but it seems like in cold temperatures it doesn't really like to feed with certain magazines so that's a downside um again it's not a huge downside but it's it's not ideal for like an old like a rifle you're gonna field on the rig unless you live somewhere in a climate where it's a lot warmer other downside was so I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but the polymer and the art where the RAS rail system meets the upper receiver or the upper and the lower receiver, I guess too. So it actually cracked and I'm not sure what caused it. All I know was towards the end of the day, I was, we were playing a short, you know, um, sudden death match and or team death match and all of a sudden i noticed that my red dot was like way off and i was like that's weird i mean it's an amazon special red dot so i didn't think too much of it but then i also noticed now all of a sudden your gun's hopping a lot harder than you had it tuned to like i had it dialed in pretty well throughout the day and then all of a sudden it was over hopping and i was like that's really weird um and before i really got to investigate it it was like two o'clock and i was ready to go home so i go and head back to the staging area and then I realized that the RIS was kind of like hanging, like like um, sagging. And I noticed up here had just disconnected. And it was just clearly hanging. And I investigated it further when I got home. And you can't see it here, but there was like a little fracture here. Um, I don't think I handled it very roughly, except for I remember when... I was trying to figure out the feed issue. There were a few times where I kind of frustratingly like smacked the bottom of the magazine to make sure it was seated right. I don't know if that just like was a little over overly aggressive and that caused, you know, the crack or the, you know, the fracture in the body. But I'm going to chalk it up to that. Um, I don't can't really see what else it was. I didn't take any hard falls like I've had polymer airsoft guns before. Um, you know, my, my, my cyber gun M249 featherweight is polymer and I've never had an issue with the body breaking because I understand that you have to be a little bit more delicate with it than you do with a full metal AEG. So I'm not sure what happened, but I was very, I went home feeling very frustrated, um, with the mag issue and then the fact that the gun had broken after one day of play. Um, but I tried to be you know, solutions oriented with this. So I just took some epoxy and luckily I was able to just like set it up on the, my gun wall. And that just kind of forced the gravity forced it to like sit upright and it just bonded there. It seems like it's pretty sturdy now. Um, again, epoxy should have no problem bonding with polymer and making it just as strong as it was prior, especially with this, because it's not like a critical, um, portion of the rifle where you're going to see a lot of stress um, because again if you're holding the rifle it's going to be kind of like pushing upwards and and you get what I'm saying so that was mitigated um, and then it, I was excited to see that the mag feeding issue was clearly the variable there was the weather um, it wasn't the gun itself so I felt a lot better after I fixed all these issues and repaired the gun but Again, so I would give this gun like an 8 out of 10. Uh, I think it's, it's, so far, it's been really great as far as the performance is sublime. It, it's just exceptionally well, and it, it's really awesome that, you know, SEMA in the past 5 to 10 years has really upped their game. Even with their stock, like, base model internals, 
has really upped their game and they've become the workhorse of of airsoft when it comes to reliable internals the fact that they included you know an upgraded version of SEMA internals in this rifle um that makes me feel really good uh the fact that i was really getting accurate hits with this rifle even with like a lower weight bb you know that that just really hammered home how well they did the internals on this um I just wish, I think the externals are where they should be for the price, but I just wish they put a little more thought into, you know, how the body is going to react to temperatures um, and just, you know, some of these weak points where you hit like high stress points. I wish they kind of just invested a little bit more into, you know, developing a more rigid body if they're going to use polymer, but Again, it's been really great so far. I would recommend this to anyone who's starting out in Airsoft and maybe doesn't want to drop a crap ton of coin on, you know, a full metal H&K 416 or, you know, it's just wants a good backup gun like I did. Like, I always wanted a 416, didn't want to drop the coin. This came out. I was like, that's my answer. Um, you know, I've used Umarex products before and they were great. So I was like, let me go try this out again. And it's it's been pretty great so far. So if you're looking at this, 250 bucks. Make sure you're a little bit more gentle with it than you would be um, with a full metal version of the 416. You don't have to baby it, but just, you know, be mindful that it is polymer and it's not, you know, designed to feel like a real firearm or handle that kind of uh, abuse. But other than that, that's basically it. I'll just close out showing, you know, some of the modifications I did to it. They're obviously all cosmetic. You know, I have a, a vertical foregrip here. Um, you know, I added the barrel extension and the muzzle brake, as I mentioned. And then I have a red dot. And, you know, I have a sling that's just a QD sling that's just disconnected right now. But... Other than that, that's really it. Definitely check it out if you meet the demographic that would probably want to look into this. All right, guys, take care.